My dearly beloved in Christ, you know that today we begin the final fortnight of Lent, the remaining two weeks, in which Holy Mother Church wishes us to concentrate on the passion of our Lord, most, more so than we have done thus far during Lent, to meditate, to reflect on the many sufferings of our Lord in his passion. And as we do so, we see a perfect example of all the virtues that we should strive to practice. Above all, we see incredible love on the part of our Lord, love for his Father and love for us. As our Lord said himself, greater love than this no man has, that he would lay down his life for his friends. And it has been said, our Lord even went beyond that because he laid down his life for his enemies. For as often as we have offended him, especially grievously, we became his enemy. So what love do we not see on the part of our Lord? We also see incredible obedience, perfect obedience to the will of his Father. And St. Paul emphasizes that when he says that our Lord was obedient even unto death. We also see utter detachment from the world, humility, incredible patience. Our Lord never complaining in the course of his passion, never lashing out at those who tortured him so mercilessly. And he was silent, completely silent, as he bore these tremendous sufferings. But we also see on the part of our Lord, something I would like to reflect upon particularly this morning, and that is utter selflessness. Because by nature, we are very selfish. And let us, let us admit it, let us be honest. Human nature is very self-centered. We seek to gratify our own desires, to follow our own likes and dislikes and so forth. And sometimes that leads us into conflict, maybe I should say oftentimes, into conflict with others, especially those with whom we live, because we think so often only of ourselves rather than of others. But our Lord didn't think of himself, didn't seek sympathy. In fact, I think we could say the only time that throughout the Passion, when he said anything insofar as expressing what he needed is when he said from the cross, I thirst. But he said that more to fulfill prophecy than anything. What did our Lord say when the holy, the women of Jerusalem were weeping over our Lord on the way to Calvary? He said, weep not for me, but for yourselves and for your children. Incredible. There he was covered with wounds and blood having been crowned with thorns, scourged, mocked, spit upon, and given blows. And he says, do not weep for me. Again, an utter selflessness, thinking only of others. Weep for yourselves and for your children. And then when he was finally nailed to the cross and raised upon it, what were the first words that came from his lips? Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Thinking not of himself, but praying for the conversion of his executioners. So our Lord here gives us a wonderful example of how we must strive to renounce ourselves. Just as he said, if you will be my disciple, deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me. So self-denial is a very important part of Lent. During Lent, we give up something we like, we mortify ourselves, and we practice mortification. But there is there are two kinds of mortification. There is exterior mortification, where we mortify the body, we resist the senses, we fast, we maybe give up sleep, we do things that are uncomfortable to the body and to the senses. But there's another kind of mortification. St. Alphonsus refers to it as interior mortification. Interior mortification consists in restraining our inordinate self-love 
and self-will. This again, getting back to our selfishness. We like to be pampered. We like to have our own feelings and desires gratified. And we also would like our own will to be done. Very hard for us to give in and let someone else have his or her way. So this is something else we should strive during Lent to mortify the interior, especially, again, our self-love and our self-will. Our Lord has said, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself. Now, all perfection of the soul consists in this very self-denial. For St. Augustine says, the less one seeks to gratify the passions, the more one truly loves God. And when one desires nothing but God, then one's love of God is perfect. Interior mortification consists principally in restraining and keeping in check these inordinate inclinations of self-love. The soul has other enemies, it is true, but the worst enemy of all is our own self-love. St. Mary Magdalene de Pazzi said, Self-love is like the worm that gnaws at the root and destroys not only the fruit, but the very life of the plant. The same saint adds, the traitor that we have to fear most is self-love. For self-love betrays us, just as Judas betrayed our Lord with a kiss. He who conquers self-love has conquered everything. So let us think about that. So, so often, we are hurt or offended by maybe something that somebody says or does, little slights, and we, have it, we find it so hard to let go. And we harbor that resentment within us. So this is, again, self-love. But there is another self that we must conquer, and that is our self-will. There is no obstacle, St. Alph uh, uh, Alphonsus goes on to say, there is no obstacle more harmful in striving after perfection than the gratification of self-will. If, says St. Bernard, you can induce men to give up their self-will, then there is no hell for them to fear. St. Augustine remarks, the devil became what he is by self-will. Therefore, in his war against Christians, his most effective and deadly weapon is their self-will. So let us strive as we reflect upon our Lord's passion to mortify these two areas, the interior, not just the exterior, our self-love, our self-will, to reflect upon how much our Lord suffered and how utterly selfless he was and try to overcome our selfishness. Some years ago, somebody recommended a book to me, and I found it very interesting. It was written in 1992, and the title of the book is A Nation of Victims. And the sub subtitle is something like The, the Corruption of the American, um, I don't remember the, the terminology, but how, how the American um, attitude, I guess you could say behavior, has what we have lost over the last since Vatican II, not just insofar as faith and the Mass and so forth, but also culturally how this country has suffered. And that is this victimhood. Everybody is a victim. Something bad happens instead of people thinking, I have a cross to carry, it's who can I blame? And I have read that there are more lawyers in the United States than in the entire rest of the world combined. And that is because of this desire to sue anyone and everybody for anything, the greed, anything, anytime people think they can get a little money to sue. Now, I'm not hereby condemning lawsuits. In fact, when there has been serious malpractice, it's a good thing, because if there were no lawsuits, then the professions would not, would not take measures to improve. But this idea to always want to blame somebody, to always want to sue, to always, to always want to be a victim and get everybody's pity. We look at our Lord, again, utterly selfless, and yet he was indeed 
the victim of victims, a victim of the wrath of his heavenly Father because of our sins, a victim suffering in our place, for we truly are the guilty ones. Let us then, during Passion Tide, meditate on the wonderful example of our Lord, how silent he was, how patient, how meek, and how selfless. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.